This is a podcast from the Nuffield Department of Medicine. Today we speak with Professor Peter Simmons about evolution in viruses. Why is it important to understand how RNA viruses evolve? RNA viruses are very important medical and veterinary pathogens and they ravage crops. Uh, we need to understand why they are pathogenic and how they spread. Importantly, they also represent the majority of new viruses that are emerging over time, over the last century and before. And we really need to understand how this happens, how we can predict when viruses are going to emerge, how we might then control them, um, and how we might develop vaccines for them. How do viruses manage to be so successful? RNA viruses are small in the sense of their genomes are perhaps only a few thousand bases long. For comparison, the human genome is three billion bases long and contains 25 or 30,000 genes. RNA viruses might only have five, um, and yet they have this extraordinary complex relationship with the host, which means that they can actually go into a cell and really have mechanisms which we don't really understand to evade the host response to infection um, and cause you know, widespread infection of humans and systemic disease and so on in, in ways that the immune system can't control. Um, research is extremely important in understanding how this interaction occurs and what factors allow a virus to escape from these sophisticated host cell defences. What are the most important lines of research that have developed over the past five or ten years? Well, in our research group, we've been very interested in the interaction of um, viruses and hosts. And we've been exploring ways in which, in fact, this interaction might be modified by uh, other more exotic attributes of, of RNA virus genomes. We imagine an RNA virus genome to be simply a piece of RNA to code for protein. But actually, the RNA molecule is structured and has compositional features which are, we think also modify the way in which the virus interacts. Um, the RNA itself, for example, can actually form complex internal RNA structures. Um, and we know that viruses that show this property are, are persistent in their hosts. So for example, hepatitis C virus, which causes liver disease over a long period of time, actually has an intensely structured genome. And we think the structure somehow in modifies the interaction of the RNA with you know, RNA sensors in the cell and actually prevents an, an effective immune response developing that would clear the virus. Um, the other feature which we believe is important is the composition. And um, uh, the RNA is made up of four bases. Um, you can also count base or dinucleotides where you're looking at sort of frequencies of one base followed by another. And of these, the C followed by G, or CPG, dinucleotide, seems to be extremely important. Um, it looks, in the evolutionary terms, that RNA viruses have tried to avoid having this in their genomes. And it's nothing to do with protein coding. It's because it seems as if this is a recognition site for host cell defense. In fact, if we make artificial viruses where we increase the number of CPGs in the genome, the viruses can barely replicate in the cell. Um, um, because it seems as though the, the cell can recognize them as foreign in some way and actually eliminate them. And this translates through to in vitro, in vivo models, where in fact if we um, use a sort of live host system, we can actually show that disease can be attenuated um, uh, by infection. Um, the importance of this is that um, we can precisely control replication now in, in a really quite novel way. And that means that, for example, we can generate viruses which um, just fail to replicate properly and are therefore attenuated. So this would be a fantastic way to make a safe vaccine. We can infect humans, livestock, and so on with these viruses. They become infected, but disease can't develop, but they actually develop a substantial immune response uh, to the virus and protect them. So modifying polio vaccine to make it safe would be a great application of this process. Why does your line of research matter? Why should we put money into it? Well, I think it's important that we really understand more about how RNA viruses work. And I, I know that sounds a bit blue sky, but nevertheless, it does underpin so much of our current understanding of human disease, uh, veterinary disease, and so on. So, you know, if we could understand, you know, how this host cell interaction worked, we, we 
can then obviously understand a bit more about how to control uh, virus infections. Um, the other point would be, again, that we can actually, you know, using some of these discoveries that we've made recently on composition and structure, we can really precisely manipulate the way in which a virus interacts with a, a cell and host. And so, in fact, we can actually generate these new vaccines, which are going to be uh, safe uh, and non-reverting uh, uh, for human and animal use. How does your research fit into translational medicine within the department? Well, uh, I mentioned the vaccine applications uh, for the work we've done. Um, there are other translational aspects. I, I'm, by background, uh, a medical doctor, and I work uh, one session at the hospital in clinical virology. And one of the programs we're starting there is to really explore the use of deep sequencing as a diagnostic technique. And, and the idea behind that is that rather than do targeted screening for individual viruses, we can actually look at the entire virome of an individual sample and actually really be able to then sort of screen much more effectively for a wide range of different pathogens and carrier viruses that my, a patient might be infected with. So I think in the long term, this is going to fit very well with sort of developments in molecular medicine and diagnostics, which will actually improve uh, patient uh, treatment uh, and, and monitoring. Thank you for talking to us.